This is Marcia Crossley Cohen, a professional ballet dancer from Ontario. And this is Guy Belair, an IT worker from Quebec. Both took fluoroquinolone antibiotics in the last year. The manufacturers were ordered to add strong warnings about the risk of tendon injuries in 2008. But four years later, we're still hearing horror stories. It's un unbearably devastating to think I'm going to have to stop what I love more than anything. It felt like everything uh, from head to toe was hurting. It was just like this almost throbbing pain everywhere in my body. Marcia still tries to pass on her lifelong love of dance to others, but now she has to deal with extreme pain in her Achilles tendon and a condition called tinnitus, a constant ringing in her ears. I'm, I'm heartbroken because uh, dancing is my life, teaching is my life, and I am very worried that I, I'm not able to do that now. Guy is now on disability, the pain making him a prisoner in his own home. I uh, hardly ever leave the house. It's very hard to think about the future right now, since there's not much I can actually do. It's, it's very depressing. Both were prescribed fluoroquinolones for relatively mild sinus infections, and both say they would have refused the drugs had they only been told about the risks. Had the doctor told you that if you take this particular drug, this might happen, would you have had the prescription filled? 100% not. This is my life. A misinformation is, uh, it's, it's fatal, basically. It sealed my fate. But how could that be? Since 2008, the information that goes out to doctors for all fluoroquinolones has included a much stronger warning about potential risks, like tendon injuries, seizures, and accelerated heart rate. The warning system is almost completely inadequate. Alan Castles is a drug policy researcher at the University of Victoria. He says all the people who should be communicating the risks of prescription drugs are failing miserably. There's lots of blame to go around. You have physicians who prescribe drugs for uh, patients who possibly don't need them. You've got the, the, the power of the pharmaceutical industry that continues to market very aggressively the newest, the latest, the highest powered treatments and those get used widely in the community when they shouldn't be. It seems to me that Health Canada certainly doesn't go out of their way to warn physicians in a serious way. This is the warning doctors see for Leviquin, a 68-page product monograph that does list the potential serious side effects, but not until page 5, and it's not given to patients either. Toronto-based Janssen Ortho markets Leviquin in Canada, one of three brand-name fluoroquinolones approved by Health Canada. They declined our request for an on-camera interview and sent us a statement reiterating the risks, but adding, Leviquin has been proven to be a safe and effective medication when used according to the product labeling. Janssen works closely with Health Canada to ensure our product labeling provides physicians with the information they need to make the most informed decisions for the treatment of their patients. Bayer markets the other two approved brand name fluoroquinolones, Avalox and Cipro. The company told 16 by 9, Bayer's highest priority is patient safety, and we work closely with Health Canada and health authorities on the labeling for our products. Information provided to healthcare practitioners is in accordance with that contained in the product label, and Bayer adheres to strict industry codes. MP Terence Young says those industry codes are not nearly strict enough to protect patients, even though a simple change could make a big difference. Patients should get in their hand a patient information leaflet that is plainly worded, that is, it's written in plain language, and the most important safety information is right up at the top in bold print. 11 years you've been working on this, has anything changed? I think it's even worse now. More Canadians now are dying and suffering adverse reactions from prescription drugs than ever. Just last November, Canada's Interim Auditor General John Wiersema released a scathing report blasting Health Canada for not acting quickly enough. I mean, in some cases it can take actually up to two years to, uh, to review the safety issue and to communicate uh, the results uh, to Canadians. And we think that's, that's too long. Health Minister Leona Aglukak promised her agency would clean up its act. Our government agrees with the Auditor General's findings and work is already underway to address those recommendations. Young hopes those changes will help, but both he and Alan Castles believe what Canada really needs is an independent drug safety agency.
You can't have the same agency approving drugs and then several years later saying, no, we're going to take the drug off the market. Uh, it just it, it doesn't work very well that way. A watchdog group would bite Health Canada in the ass on this one, uh, on, on many drug issues. But so far, there are no signs that will happen anytime soon. And for patients like Mark, Marcia, Guy, and many others, after all their suffering, that is still a bitter pill to swallow.